find us. Josh, I can see you. You are there. Vivek is there. Anyone else who joined us? We'll be having uh, Manchu and Jenna with us. But I just want you guys to say a quick hi before I make them join you guys. If you have recently joined us, please say a quick hi so we can start the live session. Hi, Josh. Hi, Vivek. Let's wait for some members to join in. I can't see anyone who has joined us right now. I can just see two people from Facebook who joined. Hi. There's one from Facebook now. Hi. I hope you all are fine. Had your dinner. Subscribe. Did you do it, Josh? That's good. Keep keep going. That's a good work you're doing. Hi, Anuja. Uh, that's Preet or Preet's mom. Hi, Amrita. Hi, Tesh. I hope I'm spelling you guys, um, pronouncing you guys well. Hi, Nuri. How are you? Did you? Josh, that's really good. I'm proud of you. So the purpose for today is not doing any lessons with you all. It's something much better than doing lessons. We'll be meeting some two wonderful ladies today. And they will be talking to you. They will be telling you guys about 11 plus. And you can ask them as many things you know you want to ask about 11 plus. You can just ask them. Should I invite my first guest in first for you all? Are you ready? Just give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready. If you're ready, then I can make Manju join us. Yes, you are. Josh is ready. I'm so used to saying all of your names now. So let me first get Manju in. And if you don't know me, I'm Ashima here. And I am one of the tutors and directors of Amishas Learning Tuition. And I welcome you all to the live session today to meet two wonderful tutors and ask as many inquiries you have about 11 plus. I hope you all like this video. Don't forget to like this video and just take this video to all your friends in all the groups so that these two tutors will also give you a lot of information. So let's get Manju first with you guys. Hi Manju. Hi. Hi Ashima, how are you? Manju, you won't be able to see the screen of, of uh, them writing, but all of them are saying hi to you. Oh, hi, everyone. That's this is all Amrita is here. here. Amrita is here. And oh, we hi. have a lot of YouTube people who always come and join me live every day. Oh, wonderful. All the kids are here. Wonderful. You do such a good job as well, Ashima, doing your free, giving your time up for these kids um, for free. So you're, you're doing a great job. Well done. It's all lovely. If you see them, the way they chat with me, it's like the live session without them would not I be know. possible. I know. And and it's such a good thing you're doing. So so well done. And thank as a mom myself, um, you know, thank you so much for your free time. Not everybody does it. So well done. That's fine. Uh, Prince is saying hi to you. Do you want to introduce yourself to them? If anyone doesn't know who she is. Okay, hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Manju, Manju Pillai. I um, am a mom of two. Um, one's 18 and the other's eight. I also run um, three businesses of my own. I'm a tutor, I have a tutoring center, uh, and we have classes from year three to year 13. Um, I also own and run Learn to Write. I don't know if you've heard. Um, it's a creative writing portal. And I also have a papers business where I write and um, publish 11 plus papers. So I hope that in my own way today, I can help some of you with some of your queries. It's all very exciting. I've never done anything like this before. I'm not a pro like Ashima. 
So if I make it I'm easy. I'm, I'm a very quiet person. You know, I don't like speaking so much. <laughs> oh, me neither. With kids, I'm fine. Not, With kids, not, it's not fine. Better. Yeah, don't yeah. Worry. So you love to write. That's wonderful. That's Amrita is telling you that. I'll get the messages so you can read the messages yeah. of the parents oh. here. Thank you, Amrita. Right, it's very wonderful. That's Thank Amrita is telling you. Thank you. And it's one more telling you you're cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I take that as a compliment. Uh, my my teenage daughter would like it, but yeah, thank Love you. <laughs> and this one, Josh, he's really good in maths. So one oh, more from him. I love maths. I love maths too. I, I love both maths and English. So I, I love equi, both of subjects. So well done. It's a lovely subject. It has so much opportunity that it gives you so much scope in your life. Um, a subject that will never go out of fashion. So well done, Josh. Keep working. Should we get Jen also in so that they can meet both of you together? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm just going to move my... There we are. That's better. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, how are you? You do. Both of you. I'm oh, fine. Do you, you want to introduce yourself to the parents? They are... uh, of, of course. Um, yeah. So my name is Gemma. Um, I run uh, the Education Hotel which offers online tuition and um, also my school boxes, which does like a subscription box for 11 plus with past paper questions and treats and stickers and checklists and all sorts of things. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's me. I did the 11 plus myself. Um, wow. a, a so we, have a, we have one of the tutors who's done 11 plus herself. Yeah, I did it myself. So we I can ask you a lot of inquiries. How do you, find 11 plus at your age when you did that was must be a long time ago it was a while ago yeah um i applied to uh chelmsford county high school for girls so that's a grammar down in essex um and yeah it was i remember this time when i was when i was that age um uh, and that idea of of having to do work over summer when my friends weren't and having to do that preparation and I remember, you know, pushing back against mum, mum trying to make me do spellings all the time. It's definitely spelling. a clear memory. <laughs> this is something I think both of you can answer. I know they keep asking. This is something I keep getting. How should we work on the vocabulary of our kids? This is Gemma, something really everybody ask. Gemma, do you want to go first so we don't speak over each other? Uh, sure. Um, so... So for me, the best way is to have fun with it. So one of the things that I do with my kids um, is we, we work one to one. So I will give them five words to put into sentences throughout the day, like a stealth idea. So you have to get your sentence, you have to get your word in the sentence and you have to see whether you can get it in, in, in the right way. And then at the end of the day, over the dinner table to discuss what words those were find out did did they spot your words did they not um so that always is, is quite a fun one um the others is is things like speed bananagrams um just regarding like spelling them or uh, antonyms and synonyms so you'd say a word and people have to grab the tiles to be able to get those synonyms or antonyms out there those are those are probably two of my favorite ones to do what about you manju how would you do it um I'm quite an old-fashioned kind of uh, parent and, and tutor. I don't like the lists. I don't like kids learning things by heart. Um, I grew up in Oman in the Middle East, and we had a totally different education system. Um, and I don't remember having textbooks and lists and all of that. I think the best way, and especially because a lot of your members um, don't have English as their first language, they might not be speaking English fluently at home, um, is is to use it in your your daily vocabulary with them. So what I would do is is pick a word, like Gemma said, and use it in your sentences to them and kids i mean i've done lots of research into this when when i was doing my my research and i you know kids learn more from listening 
than from reading. Um, and TV, I can't stress the importance. And you might think, oh, why is Manji saying to watch TV? But, you know, my eight-year-old has a better vocabulary than perhaps a lot of 15-year-olds. And that's not because of me. It's because he is, watches TV a lot and he watches YouTube a lot. And it's what they watch that's important. So if they're watching, if they've got younger siblings and they're watching what the younger kids watch, then their vocabulary is not going to improve. So you've got to find documentaries. You've got to find things that you can watch as a family which might have, you know, daytime quiz shows or how it's made or, um, and, you know, Top Gear, for example, if they're interested in cars. And that might have words that are a bit hard for them rather than saying, here's a list and go study. So, so try and change it around a bit, like Gemma said, make it fun, but make it so that they're not conscious that they're learning and then they, they, they would pick it up. That's my advice. What I do in my tuition, I keep telling them, just make a small diary. Like there are some words in verbal, you find them really tricky. Just write them down, have a dictionary side of you, just find the meaning of them and keep writing the words. And the girls, I think so the girls prefer doing that, not the boys. The boys are too lazy. If yeah. I tell them, make a diary, they'll be like, oh, Ashima, not a diary. Yeah, because there's so cool. much of pressure of 11 plus and you tell them to make a diary, boys would be like, Ashima, tell us to watch something on YouTube. That would be better than making a diary. Absolutely. And I think we have to, we have to change with, with time. So change a little bit. Modern games, there's vocabulary games, there's apps on, um, you know, Android and iPhone. So they like that. I know there, there are so many apps now. If you look at iPhones, because all the kids have seen your fours and your fives, all of them, it's all of them have an iPhone. I never mm -hmm. imagined myself having an iPhone or having any phone till I got married. I my know, first I phone know. was when I got married. And I, mm -hmm. if I tell my kids that, and they were like, come on, mom, that can't be true. Yeah. How could you survive without a phone? Oh, that's what <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't survive without mine. I'll admit, I have three really? screens up at the moment. Yeah, I'm, a th I'm on three screens. So. We had that big Nokia yeah. phones in India, remember? I don't know. <laughs> You guys I'm, I'm, a geek as well. I'm a bit of a geek as well. So I've got to have all the latest gadgets and everything. So I, I totally understand. <laughs> I have it now, but my first phone, I still remember, it was the Nokia, really huge phone. Was Didn't have any of the features. Only feature that it had was to give me a call. Oh. <laughs> so that was the only thing my phone used to do. But now is like, if you ask them, the kids, if I ask my kids also, what do you want for birthday? Mom, the latest iPhone. I said, "What?" Yeah, but yeah. things worth saying. There are some great. There are some great apps, and there are some great websites out there, like Free Rice. There's Hit the yeah. Button. There's loads of loads of things that you can do. I say to my kids, little and often, and yeah. little and varied. So if yeah. you're going to spend 15 minutes playing Hit the Button, and then you're going to be, you know, doing something for another 10 minutes and then you're going to be changing and and you know just different different ways of doing things is just yeah. Yeah. then you're not continually doing the same thing i would say don't go and spend a lot of money on things because there's so many free stuff on online um there's vocabulary.com which is totally free um and there's lists everywhere so you don't you don't need to go spend hundreds of pounds and buy resources and stuff because it's all available online uh but it's it's you can give someone ten thousand words and they're not going to remember just do little and often like Gemma said yeah you're never going to cover it all i think that's that's something that i say to my parents all the time like you just it's infinite so yeah there's always going to be another resource. There's always going to be another list that has more words. But at the end yeah. of the day, you can do what you can do. I think so. You can make your own flashcards also. It's so easy to make. Yeah, I made a lot of flashcards for my daughter for GCSE. That's a different thing you didn't go through. But we have so many flashcards for everything, for maths, for English. And I remember yeah. Manju's uh, Learn to Write had really helped Ishita a lot. Oh, I mean, thank she you. is a child who always struggles with uh, her comp comprehension and things like that. So she thank started you. with, and Manju told me, start with the lower level with her and then go with the high level and touch wood. She did really well with Learn to Ride. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I really, I am, I am really a bit um, excited at, at helping children because 
it's something that I'm passionate about myself, and I've, I've you know, that's what my whole educational journey was about. Um, but peer parents have this understanding or misunderstanding that my child is a bad writer, and they put this stigma into their heads from when they're quite little because they might not be writing in the way they expect them to be, but every child is different, every child is unique, and I think, you know, we just need to encourage that. And, you know, when it's their time, they will write what they want. Yeah, with, the, with the practice, it also comes with the practice. Manju, that's for you. Any tips how to improve creative writing? Uh, well, um, tips, I would say, if you have a reluctant writer who doesn't want to write, do not force them, do not make them write drafts and redrafts and correct it and edit it that's the worst thing you can do to a child give them the freedom to to write a diary write a shopping list write uh what they want from amazon make a list of what toys you want or what you want for christmas write a letter to santa write a letter to the postman to say thank you for delivering our um you know our basics so um make it so that it doesn't become a chore for them. In terms of um, speed, some people, some children are great writers, but they're quite slow. You have to treat it as an exercise where you build up their kind of stamina. It's a bit like physio. So you give them a little bit to write every day, time them, five minutes, even four minutes. Do that for a couple of weeks, three weeks, and then build it up so that you go to six, ten, seven, and eight. Ultimately, by the time they're doing their 11 plus for the super selectives, in 40 or 50 minutes, you're expected to write two sides of an A4 lined page. That's the ultimate aim. But you're not going to start with that. Even as, you know, three months before the exam, you have kids who can't achieve that. So work at it regularly, consistently, and lots of praise. Praise is so important. Especially boys, because I'm I have an eight year old and an eighteen year old and one is a boy, one's a girl, and it's so different, you know. So you have to sometimes you just have to forget what your expectations are and just praise, praise, praise. Um don't pick on little bits, so just look at the bigger picture. Oh, yeah, and read something, yeah, I know. I, in my tuition, I read boys if I give them a topic to write and I and I'll tell them. Uh, just write one and a half page and you know when i when i have to give the feedback what i get only 10 lines and then yeah. this Rashma, we have done it we've done everything is there what you told us and i'm sure Gemma can add some some to that as well with her experience Gemma, how do you do creative writing in with your kids in your tuition um so i was gonna say i'm just give me one minute because i use oh they're in our boxes let me grab them uh we use rory story keeps so <laughs> These are just for kind of creativity. Let's see if I can find it. There we are. These guys. These ones. Oh yes, I've so, seen them. Wow. Yeah. So just for like when I this is specifically for kids that struggle to build a story. Yeah. Um, so if they are not the most imaginative, not the most creative, but they need they're struggling to find something to to write about and, and actually i find this with girls weirdly i find the boys are usually a bit more imaginative but the girls maybe always follow That's the same fun. structure yeah <laughs> so and, and with these guys, evidence, what do you think about the writing i think when i see the creative writing i'm like thank god the first stage is my is multiple choice they don't have to write anything oh, i just about I the boys don't write but the girls the girls aren't that creative so yeah. that's that's my biggest thing. So I, I tend to use these guys with them. Um, yeah, they're nice. They're worth doing. I think yeah. so if any of the kids of my tuition will be looking this, Jeva, they would be really liking what you are offering them. <laughs> because I keep telling them, be creative, be creative. They must be like, yeah. what's wrong with Ashima? Going on saying, be creative. How can we be creative? It's I tell them, just think now, about the topics you guys like the most. <laughs> think about Xbox. You have to go to a market and you're buying Xbox. How would you tell your mother about that? Write a story about that. And they'll it's be also to unique, um, because what I say is always don't go with what comes into your mind first. Try and be different. How can you be different? You know, if you've got 5,000 kids doing an exam, if they're all going to write about a similar thing, how are you going to be different? So 
kind of be try and be as different from others as you can that's another one reading between the lines in comprehension answering the indirect questions any tips please who wants to go first emma uh okay my well mine is i suppose a little bit odd but i say to my kids to be like a super spy so you've got yeah. to you've got to in inference questions you've got to be that person with the mic micros with the sorry magnifying glass and what did they mean why did they plan to do that i've got to kind of put them under the spot and see see kind of like like you're putting them in investigation so why did they write that what's their purpose behind it mm. all those types of things to think about and i think about okay if i've got if you've got the writer or the piece in front of you and you're examining it where are you going to get your reading between yeah. the lines kind of bits from and yeah. so comprehension is something um, that's seen everyone struggling this is something they don't like how do you manage well, to i would add to that. sorry shuma i said how do you manage to do um, online comprehension i i um in my classes um what i say to them is like jemma said read before that section and read after it so don't just rely on those lines understand what has happened before it and what is happening after it sometimes it could be because one word has thrown them and they don't understand that one word and they just think i don't get this they just almost have to ignore that word they don't know and try and read around it and make sense of it so it's it's a mental block but if you try and look at it as as a spy and look for clues before and after so read in the whole context rather than just two lines um and also children skim read a lot of times so they haven't read with the in depth um focus that that you would need to gather inference especially if it's a hard passage so i would say read one more time if if it doesn't make sense the first time and and that should normally do the trick but 11 plus don't give you so much time to read um well if the passage is short then you can if the passage is long generally speaking the inference questions are not that many so from experience the really tough questions are for shorter passages um also uh, you know when you read for the first time you can use a ruler for some children they skip lines or they go like that so you can reuse a ruler or even your finger to follow the line so that you haven't skipped any information and basic things but so for some kids it makes a huge difference um ultimately they need to read outside of 11th class they need to read even if it's newspapers magazines you know leaflets that come through the door they just need to read and have an exposure to as many different genres as they can um so they're not faced with a passage when they see it for the first time um it's it's an acquired skill it's there's no magic formula unfortunately and i keep saying the parents that they keep asking me give us any tips for comprehension i said the biggest tip is to read it and they said what do you want them to read <laughs> i'm thinking this i'm seeing there's some audio uh, audio things also good the audio videos things if the kids don't like doing the videos watching the audio books yes. audio books yeah. are really good i'm an audio i'm thinking what i'm saying audio audio i'm a huge fan um so like harry potter my son had no interest in it we watched the first two films and now he's hooked on reading it um so yeah i'm 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 a huge fan of trying different methods um to you know charles dickens if they don't want to read it go watch a film go watch oliver twist and they might like it and then and then you might get them interested in it so yeah try different methods don't be straight to your sense method he he tells me mom you know doing xbox gives you a lo lot of a cabri i said how at least you come to know about the different countries <laughs> you are playing with so you know all the countries you are playing with and gives me a lot of knowledge i said yeah that's true maybe that's another way of getting knowledge for the boys And the and other YouTube, oh, sorry, doing the, the other thing with the audio books is try and have the visual book at the same time because yeah. um so i am also dyslexic um and therefore ear reading is is something that's really big in in kind of dyslexia but you follow along as well because then you know yeah. what the word looks like 
because otherwise you might not have any idea what it looks like, but you'll know what it sounds like. And then yeah. you'll struggle when you come up with VR and, and verbal reasoning stuff. So I'm try and follow sorry. along. Yeah. Sorry, there's yeah. another one for you guys. How to go about clauses. I think so. This is Both something, questions. again, I've seen the kids struggling a lot throughout. Manji, so, uh, yeah. so there are different types of closed tests, right? As you know, there's one where they take words out and put them in a table, normally at the top or at the bottom. For those, my tip would be to go and do the ones that you can fit in. So you have to do a quick skim of the passage if, if it's a passage connected. So you have an idea what it's about. So if it's about mountains, you can think of all the vocabulary and things about mountain that you know. Go and fill in the ones that you know. Take them off from the table. That would leave you a few words that you haven't used. So the ones you're not sure of, you're left with a smaller selection of words and then see which ones fit in. Another technique would be to look at parts of speech. So, for example, if you've got the uh, lofty mountain and lofty is taken out or steep hill, steep is taken out, you know hill or mountain is a noun. So you're looking for an adjective. So if you've got three words left and one is a verb, one is an adverb and one is an adjective, you know you need an adjective. So you'd go and pick the adjective. So that's that's one fast technique to, to do close test. And speed. So I find the first pass to post books are quite tough, but they're quite good. Um, they usually give like four minutes for a page, which is to start with quite um impossible for them but i think if you keep them doing again and again so don't make them write in the book copy it or make them do in a separate notebook and keep practicing aim for that four minutes for one close test which is which is what is, is required Gemma, yeah timing timing is such a big thing yeah. um and again i mean it pulls through to like vr non-vr stuff but with mine we'll say you try it, you spend a set amount of time on it, and if you don't know it, you circle it, you go back to it, because you can't spend so long just trying to work out that one thing. They're all worth the same amount of points. Yeah. So skip it, move on, but don't do it too quickly, because again, yeah. that's something that they'll they'll just rush through and they'll skip everything and then go back. So you've got to get the right balance with that. Um, yeah. The same Can thing with those shuffled sentences. Yeah, one person is again asking about your jumbled sentences. Yeah, jumbled sentences, shuffled sentences. So with those, um, again, as Manji said, the knowing whether you're looking for adjectives, whether you're looking for nouns, adverbs, that helps with the shuffled sentences. There's only so many adjectives they can put in a sentence. So <laughs> you've got to put it together. <laughs> you can't just spread them out. Um, and again, with those, I take a text they know quite well and cut up the cut up the sentences so that they become again shuffled sentences and then see the patterns within it so you start to see okay that you mention the main object in the middle or we will always put we'll put an adjective along with that noun and you can start to see okay these words will come together these are text that maybe they're a bit more familiar with right at the start and then and then really you are it's running through them and running through that practice yeah, there is an online free close test maker. If I if I can find the link, I'll put it on your page for you, Ashima. It's so already you there. And he can make it. Okay, so they know about it. So that's yeah, a good way. It has thousand, around 1,000 clauses in that. Yeah. That one, and, yeah. And, yeah. Already there. You can find everything in the group here. Don't worry. <laughs> All the free resources are there. But that's I also like the CGP book. It's really good. Have you tried the clause book of CGP? Yes, uh, we use that in year four. And, and to start with, they, they find it a little bit tricky. But then yeah. I say to the parents, stick at it, stick at it. And, and by June, July, they, they get quite good at it. And that's for another one for, this is poetry now. Can comprehension article be a poetry too, as it's hard to infer the, in the meaning? Gemma, do you want to go? It can be, but then I also do independence. So the independents yeah. often do poetry. Um, yeah. especially the super selectives, I think, probably do as well, but yeah, the yeah. indies do. Um, yeah. it's Definitely. a little bit different in that they they often look for techniques, 
So yeah. it's looking at how do we use that metaphor? How is the alliteration used in order to create sound? Or, you know, what's the rhythm like? You're looking more at more at techniques with that than you are at inferences, I, I suppose. Yeah. It, it, still, it still counts as an inference, but it's, it's a technique-based question. It is, and it's more analysis than uh, one word or one sentence answers. So you have um, center loves uh, who have in their second stage for the past seven years, I think, seven or eight years, they have, um, they, they do have poetry comprehension. And the way to go about it is to familiarize yourself with different types and different forms of poetry from different genres. So wartime poems are quite popular. Um, funny poems written in current times, contemporary poems are quite popular. Um, so, you know, go and look at uh, classic poetry. Uh, there's, it's available online. So if you typed in, for example, daffodils, Wordsworth, and you looked at and you'd ask for analysis, there'll be a, a thousand analysis that comes up. So make your child familiar with how to analyze a, a verse or, or a stanza. Um, in these, yes, I know Elaine's do it quite a lot. Um, and um, it's all about understanding. You can't really teach a child that. It, it comes from practice and it comes from understanding what the poem is about. Usually there'll be hidden meanings. There'll be a life lesson or a metaphor, something that's figurative and it's, it's, it's behind. It's a bigger picture which they need to look for. So if you have somebody walking through a forest thinking and and the and the road and the path is, is never ending, usually it's like a life journey. So some like some, you know, you've got to look for symbolism and you've got to look for imagery. So you can't do it all in, in year four. It's some some of the topics are too hard. So you've got to leave it for year five and, and probably the last two terms of year five. Otherwise it becomes too hard for them. And for poetry specifically, um, in terms of books, uh, the Galore Park stuff has yeah. quite a lot of good poems that are there that are analysable. Yeah. I don't know if it's in their 11 or 13 plus book, but 13 plus, it's, it's yeah. in the 13 plus yeah, yeah, there's some really great ones to analyse in there. Yeah. yeah, and that's what you need to do. So 11 plus, you, you, you won't find a lot of poems. So because it's such high level, you need to look at 13 plus books um, for them. There's one thing now. What kind of interview they do in the private schools? Who wants to go? Flag go? <laughs> go on. Go on. Right. So depends on the private school, right? So every school is not the same. Um, usually it is not a test. It is to understand the child and understand their family background, their personality, their likes and dislikes. Um, it is never a decision maker as far as entrances are concerned. So you have to pass the written test. And they're looking to see whether there's any red flags initially. Um, they're also looking to see whether that child will adapt to the school's values and ethos. So they will ask questions around that. They'll ask questions about, you know, there's no set questions, but they'll ask questions about what the child generally knows and, and mingles with and reads. And obviously, upbringing is quite important for that as well. So you can't really, apart from confidence and sitting and posture and all of that, you can't really train a child because they're looking for their natural personality. And the worst thing you can do to a child who goes into an interview and say is, is say, be someone else. It's, you be yourself, and that's more than enough. Gemma? Um, yeah, so I suppose... Picking up on that, the the different schools do different things. For example, Winchester does a parents meeting, um, yeah. and quite a lot of parents will go into that and not necessarily know what it's about. It's so that the school knows the whole family. Yeah. Um, it is all about fit. The one thing I would say is, if you're talking through talking talking through interview questions, is great with your child, but make sure that they're aware that it's not a script. It's yeah. they don't sound scripted. They have an idea about what they want to discuss or, you know, something that might demonstrate these things, but not, it doesn't sound robotic. Yeah. Um, so when I work with kids on interview, it's turning that one word answer into lots of, lots of like a mini story 
or something that you've got to say to, to them, but it's not scripted. Because if it sounds scripted, they the the admission staff will automatically change track for a start and they'll end up asking something completely different. But yeah. also it just it doesn't sound natural. And then the last thing I suppose is is just a, as in addition to the standard, why do you want to go here? Tell me about your subjects. What are you reading? Type things. Um, uh, recently, there have been a number of a number of selective schools that do. They'll give you a poem, or they'll give you a piece of art, and yeah. they'll just ask what you think about it. And there's no right or wrong, and, and there really is no right or wrong. But you've got to speak. <laughs> you can't just go silent. So speak. Tell them what you think. Tell them what the artist might have thought. They're not looking for you to recognize it, but they're looking for you to be able to tell them what you think about it or how they've used the colors in it or what it makes you feel. So then they're just looking for the way that you look at things and how you analyze them. Well, I hear it's easier. In Eltham College, what they normally do is they just tell you to uh, talk about the favorite book you like. Just talk about the book. You have to just talk about the group and they do a group activity with the boys. And in the group activities could be anything. They can make, they can tell you to go in the field, just try, uh, just want to see how they get involved with the with their new uh, friends and things. I will see yeah. them, how they get along with the new environment, basically. Yeah. It's if much it's easier here. Yeah. Sports, music or drama school that specializes in those fields, they might even ask the child to bring in something like an achievement, yeah. a medal certificate something they're proud of just to be an icebreaker so the child is not sitting there shivering and then that is the opener to their conversation yeah. I know one school where I live um, they the, the head teacher goes in and they just play games they just have puzzles um, and that's it and through that conversation she kind of captures the child and, and the essence so yeah they're different different ways that's yeah. why these things were new to me but then when we, I had a boy giving seven oaks and things like that, I was like, okay, I can prepare you. I was telling him what my son did for Eltham. That was a long time ago. But now yeah. I'm used to it. I know what they will ask. I was telling him, I said, you can, you know, just read a book and do this. And then I said, let me also have a research and see where it goes. When I, when I did a research, I was like, oh my God, I'm giving him absolutely different thing. It's not okay. what my son had to do for uh, Eltham College. Awesome. I know All that the schools are different. You're right. I know that a lot of my parents get a bit worried when that whole bring a thing in, um, yeah. because sometimes they turn up and there's kids with like medals and trophies, and it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> it's yeah. so that they have something to talk about. You do not. Yeah. You, you're not. You're not going to be. You're not going to ace the interview because you bring in a champion's yeah. trophy. No. You, you're just as much bringing in a, a poem you've written or a song you've written or, you know, a painting that you did of your brother. Those things are just as valuable. So don't yeah, feel like you, you know. have to bring in the best thing ever. No. But don't they have, I think so in private schools, I don't know about this, what in your area, in Eltham College and Seven Oaks, what they do is they have two set of exams. One they have for 11 plus. You need to pass that, the entrance, and another they have for the scholarship. Like if you specialized in something or the other, like you're good in swimming. Not all schools do that. Um, most of the schools take their 11 plus tests to be their scholarship tests. Um, and they will have certain questions in, you know, in their papers that are designed to, to be. But yes, some schools do. But for music, sports, they would have separate separate tests. They yeah. have separate entrances. Yeah. And then yeah, they combine the school, both of them, and then give you. 13 plus there's academic scholarships um, and they're completely different papers, but that's that's kind of separate. There's also some, it, there are some schools, as you were saying, for the they have trickier questions that are more designed yeah. for those that would be academic scholars. And yeah. those are the ones that are typically the long markers at the end or, or the, the ones that they say are optional. Sometimes there's optional versions. Uh, those, are, those are the ones that are really designed to weed out who might be an academic scholar. Yeah. That's verbal now. How to improve verbal reasoning codes? Any tips? What do you mean by codes? I hate codes, but I'll, I start. I started to like them also now. They are a little confusing. Who wants to go uh, first? 
Well, I, I'm struggling because I, I know about three different codes. So <laughs> let me let me see what if, if this is what they mean, because, yeah, it's quite an ambiguous question. Um, I think it's where you get the uh, the each letter has a number and you have to crack the code and and figure out what the code for the word is or from a code. You have to figure out what the word is. Um, and if that's the that version. Okay. <laughs> if, um, if that's the case, um, then you have to look for familiarities. So if there's like three numbers which is the, which are the same, let's say four, 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 and there's three E's in the word, then you can guess that the four is is the E. So that's one tip that I would give and time yourself. So I have kids who might be able to do it in 10 minutes, but in these exams, you don't have 10 minutes per question. So you have to work against the clock and that's harder. Um, so yeah, look for, look for familiarities. And then I would also, when I, when I teach them, um, so if, if I figured out that the E is a four, everywhere I see a, see an E, I would go and put four at the top. So that just for me, visual is uh, visually that makes it easier to understand. So I don't try and do it mentally. I have to kind of write it down. My way is different than yours because sometimes, like you said, E is number four. But sometimes I tell them never go with the end one. What the kids do, like they see some words, they start doing from the end. E is in the end, so E is in the end of two, so E is this. Always go with the middle because sometimes they confuse you. There are lots of techniques, but I think we just have to work with the fastest that works for the child. So I would have some children who wouldn't understand that or have to adapt it. So there are lots of different techniques. As long as they're getting it done within that time, technique doesn't matter. Verbal is, I mean, verbal is something for new student. You have to, is like they have 80 questions you need to do in 40 minutes. Yeah. And I'm seeing the girls, I mean, they're like, oh, Ashima, no. We can't do this. And I'm like, okay, relax. Take your <laughs> time first. We I'll, I start timing them in January onwards. And I time them more. I mean, if it's 40 uh, minutes for 80, I'll give them 50 minutes. Okay. So initially, I'll, I'll reduce the time. Yeah. yeah. It's also with verbal, it's playing to your strengths. So again, that whole like, if you've got 80 questions, then don't spend... 20 minutes on the thing that you are probably going to get wrong yeah, do it come back to it yeah. um with the codes there's also sometimes where there's um four words and only three codes so yeah. some of the kids get confused because they can't see what one won't fit so for me we we try we try and do the letter matching letter match to a code but at the same time we're looking at which one can we try and chuck out as early as possible because if you yeah. can get rid of it, then you can prove the others are right. So yeah. it's like, put that one in the bin and then start focusing <laughs> on the ones you're looking for. That's cute. Put, put that in the bin. They'll be putting everything in the bin. My <laughs> kids will be like, here, Ashima, your friend said, put it in the bin. This has gone in the bin. This has gone in the bin. <laughs> You've got to have three left. You can't have just one left. I know. <laughs> you know, from cheeky boys. <laughs> and I always tell them because uh Newstead and Bexley and Ken, they are multiple choice. So best option is if you don't know something, just do a guesswork. Don't leave it. I yeah. keep telling them maybe one one mark for 11 plus does matter. Maybe your guesswork of one mark would make you selective and yeah. one mark, leaving one mark would make you non-selective. So it's better to do it. Yeah, there are lots of apps as well. Again, I don't know them personally, so I'm not going to Say which one but if you go on app store um there are lots of apps and they time you anyone would do the trick so you just need to have time practice yeah i use um i've just bought it up actually this one i know what it's called yeah. 11 plus that's app why or something that's why you want to name them <laughs> that's can we use clause cgb books in year four yeah yes Definitely. I'm looking at yes. this one. <laughs> I, I don't understand. There were a lot of shortcuts in this one. So I don't know what she means. What? No. Same <laughs> like cost and can, can be no. 11 plus. I don't know and what that is. Oh, trigonometry. What, what they mean is trignometry. Okay. Um, and, and trigonometry is not tested. No. 
That's why that's why I could not read this. There were so many short forms in this one. Um, well, um, trigonometry is definitely not part because once the kids go home and say they saw this question, then the parents will not be happy because it's definitely upper key stage three. So you introduce mid year seven or towards the end of year seven. No, definitely not. It's also mostly calculator based, so you, you're not yeah. going to be able to do it. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah, that's quotes now. How do you improve on the NVR cubes? Ah, <laughs> Demma, do you want to go first? Because I, I don't like them. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> I have it's not with me a magnetic version with little whiteboards that I use. Um, but I also yeah. tell my kids to use their hands. Um, in yeah. that you can kind of make a net with your hands, and then yeah. if you can fold it up whilst you're in there and you've kind of drawn it on even if it's a last resort draw on the shapes fold it and fold your hand round and then you should be able to see it i know that it seems it seems silly to do but, but sometimes it really helps, helps. Yeah. <laughs> so. um when we when we introduce cubes we spend two weeks in just making um different versions coloring right you know making your own pictures around them so they can see and then we open it out to a net and they can see where everything is gone and then we put the net back to a cube again so yeah visual visual aids um youtube is great for this because there are so many videos on youtube which will have visual representation and as some of our brains are different. Some kids, you know, some of my students, they're better at me, they can spot, I can't. So I need to have it visual. And and I think any method that works that is visual, fingers, uh, magnetic, or even use paper um, and practice, yeah. I do it, I tell them to label them, like one, three, two, four, five, yeah. six. I yeah. saw it on YouTube, as you were right. And I yeah. keep telling them, see this video on YouTube. and. Yeah. When they fold like this and they uh, when they see my hand, they're like, Ashima, what do you mean by fold like this? So when you fold yeah. them... It's sometimes hard to explain. You're like, yeah, do this. I know how to do it. <laughs> when you fold them, this one will be this one. This one will be this one. And yeah. now my kids are so used to me saying this, so they understand. But if someone new joined me and I tell them this one, this one, this one, they're looking at my hand and they just get confused. I'm like, okay. When also we come when live, when we don't have this online, I'll, I'll explain you better. Because with NVR, I don't do it. I don't know why. With NVR, just eliminate as well. There yeah. are with with cubes. There are things that when you fold them, they shouldn't be next to each other. So they shouldn't be next to each other on the net. Get rid of it. So again, it's it's about elimination as much as it's about selection. Yeah. What's the total marks and how much to obtain in each subject? I think so. Mm -hmm. That depends on the school. Different schools have different there's subjects. No there's no rule at all. <laughs> depends on which test. Uh, they usually standardize them anyway. I don't know if they know what standardized means, but they usually standardize. So the score you see is not actually out of 100 or out of 200, the standardized score. So um, how that works is, so for example, if, if, if the average or the, the, mean, the mean is, let's say, 55 out of 100, they look at how many, um, they look at, how many are above and how many are below and they find the average of that so there's a complicated formula to it but there's no rule every school is different and it doesn't really matter because you're not it's it's um it's a grading system that is on if if this particular year let's say um newstead would if the top is only 60 percent of whatever the score is and that will be the top rank so you're not fighting to get 100%. You're fighting to be on top of the cohort, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like Some are age weighted as well. It's, yeah, each each one's different. So yeah. it, it really is about where you fall on the curve. It's not about the score that you get. That's no. the hardest Absolutely. bit. Yeah. That's another shortcut, if you can read this one. Really. Seven huge diagrams. Yes, it's probability. It is part of um, the curriculum, yeah. It's like tree diagram, so it's a visual representation of probability, and it is, yeah. Well, I think so. We did this one. How do you improve NVR three D boxes, third boxes? 
or three D boxes. Three D cubes. Know. Yeah, cubes. Yeah. <laughs> was cubes again. We did that. A lot of cubes was done. Looking this. Any other? Oh, answer? Answer. I've been teaching all day, so I apologize. It's fine. Yeah. I had my cheeky earphones today. <laughs> and how do you improve the speed on CM maths and NVL? I think so. That's with practice. Uh, I would say mental maths is really important. Oh, where's Gemma gone? <laughs> She's <there. laughs> timers. Um, oh, <laughs> timers are good. Yeah, what I find, and I think I've posted this in one of the groups as well. I need to get my bed. That um, when students come to me, if they are from, um, you know, um, Asian background or Middle Eastern background, the, the education system is so different to British education system, whereas here we don't write down everything. So I find that mental math is a little bit lower so i would say to those parents who haven't been educated here to really work on mental math skills so before you teach them how to do long multiplication long division and all of that they should be able to mentally um able to do a lot of these calculations and that is the key there is a website called mentalmaths.co.uk it's free and make use of that um yeah so demo at, at this point as well, um, we'd go back to mental maths. So with my guys and, and in the box as well, we've got 10 practice mental maths questions. It's either yeah. mental maths or it's vocab. So you do it every day, little and often, just yeah. questions, questions, questions. And then for timing, if they are, it's, I, I sit with my kids whilst they do the exam. Um, not because of the pressure, but because I like to see when they slow down. So yeah. if they slow down in the middle and they, they start to get tired, we score a line and they have to get to that point by 20 minutes. And then they split, yeah. almost split the test in two yeah. or split the test in four or whatever, whatever works for you technique wise is shorten the test so that they keep the pace because you'll find that they'll drag as they get to the middle and then they might drag even further as they get to the end or they might speed up. Um, and then you know to, to rule that line, do it as half, time them as half. So they have 30, they have 20 minutes to do the first half, 20 minutes to do the second half, that much to check. And then they know where they need to be by that certain point. Yeah, and word problems, I, I, I find that that would drag them down as well. So break them down into sections. Um, look for key facts, key information in the word problem. Understand what method you're going to use, um, and so on. So work on word problems as well. If if, they, if you find they're slow, if it's slowing them down. Any free reading books to help for eleven plus? There's lots, lots. Of <laughs> There's one thing free. Our life charts are free. <laughs> Everything <laughs> else in eleven plus is yeah. not free. Mm -hmm. I know Diary of Anne Frank is free because I've just looked at it with my students this afternoon. So if you type in Diary of Anne Frank, um, it's, it's free. There are on, lots and lots yeah. of books free. Yeah. On TES, there's something called it's written by teachers, but I use that with my GCSE students. So I'm yeah. uncertain on the age kind of suitability, but they're short yeah. stories. Anything short stories is great. Like, so just great. Like, throw them that way. And you can yeah. do comprehension on them perfect yeah abridged versions of classic um books are great um actually um kindle and even if you have an iphone ibooks or an ipad they if you click on free there are a lot of free books and then if you go you know filter it down to children or age you can see the free books are available there or if you get the get the 13 plus so go to the independence websites there's a lot of comprehension for free and those texts are worth reading because they are going to have some of that more complex vocab in them. So you can often find suggestions from there as well. Yeah. I know the problem with the, I think so they don't like doing private school one is they don't have the answers in the maths. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I do. want us to do all the working outs in that. Yeah. Um, but there are lots of uh, 
free resources out there. Don't feel like you've got to. If you want, if you're looking to buy books, uh, my top tip would be pre-used ones on Amazon, which are a lot cheaper, uh, or on eBay because people sell books on and and you get them for a lot. And there's nothing wrong with them. They're just not, you know, brand new. Alice, so you did this one. How to improve in in VR in our sequences? We did this one. It's done, and this one is another one. Talk, but when we're talking sequences, you're talking A to Z, those ones if C, D is equal to E, F. Those are VR Yeah, sequences. it must be. This I know there's so many sequences. <laughs> I don't think we answered that one, but if uh, very quickly, I think, again, speed, write the alphabet down and look for patterns. And, and don't think that it's going to be the same pattern every time. So have an open mind to that as well. Put your pen on it. One, yeah. two, three. Move to the next one. One, two, three. And then ideally underneath or in dotted lines or a different a pencil or, or something that you can yeah. distinguish. Or pencil and make sure you rub out because sometimes you have too many and then you can't figure out which is which. Yeah. I like jumping like this, like a mountain. <laughs> And yeah, I said like a bunny rabbit. Two sequences <laughs> in one sequence. You can find there are two patterns going on in one. Yeah. So I keep telling them, keep looking. If there are two uh, sequences or they're asking only for one. Because if there are two going, it's not worth looking for the one they don't, they're not asking you about. Just focus on the one. They're fo uh, fo uh, they telling you like it's one, three, five. Another one will be the seventh one. Don't find the sequence for two, four, one. It'll be wasting your time. Absolutely. How to apply for 13 plus? Gemma, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. Um, with some 13 plus, you need to think early because they pretest. So you you pretest at the, a similar time to 11 plus. So that's that's something to consider, um, especially if you're looking at eating pretests, um, like St. Paul's pretests. There's there's a fair number. Um, if you're just looking at 13 plus then uh, you're you're looking at a wider range of subjects usually for common entrance depending on the different because different ones do different things but you're looking at a wider range so you're looking at english math sciences history rs geography dependent um and possibly a general paper so it is a more intensive process which is why some people decide to apply at the 11 because you're looking at something that is maybe a little bit less uh, strenuous, but then kids develop at different times. So yeah. if you have a child who really seems like they would suit, especially the independent route, um, 13 plus, my biggest tip is start early um, because I, I mean, a large amount of the kids that I personally prepare are 13 plus um, and looking at the selectives and often often we we reach them quite late so really yeah. you need to be thinking about it early um as early as, as early as possible <laughs> i can yeah. tell you about grammar schools what they do now recently kent have started they do 13 plus also they take kids in 13 plus but the way they do is different they uh, do online so they have the cats online one of the girls had given 13 plus she had to give the cats test online and she had to give French or any other language she likes the most, one language, then it has verbal, nonverbal, English, and they also had science in it. Yeah. That was something. Science, you know, yeah. I mean, with super selectives like Henrietta, Barnett, Center Loves, Newstead, Wilson's, um, Wellington Girls, non such, they don't advertise it. It's not on their website, it's not something they actively seek. So what they would do is they would have those who did their 11 plus and didn't make and passed. OK, so they have to pass the 11 plus, but they didn't get a space into that school. They keep those lists because they would still have had those schools as their first choice. So it's very unlikely that someone in a super selective will leave that school. And if they do, for whatever reason, then the school will have a space. Because remember, they're state schools, even though they're grandmas, so they have to have 30 kids. So then they'll contact 
from those lists, so let's say they have 10 kids from the list from 11 plus, um, they're those parents and they'll come and do the test. And it really depends on the school. So if it's 13 plus for a grammar, it would be maths, English, science, usually a language if they want to test. Um, and even I've even known about them doing an interview. So it depends from school to school. But Gemma's absolutely right. You need to know from the outset. So with my son, for example, I've he's not going to go and do 11 plus grammar schools because I he's not going to cope with the workload. Whereas my daughter was extremely bright and, you know, was reading when she was three. No, it's not thanks to me, but every child is different. So I have decided that he'll either do the 10 plus um, and see, and if, if not, he will do the 13 plus. So that's my plan. So like that, you need to know your child, not just go try everything. That's not what you should no, do. Some of them lock you out as well. Because if yeah. you take the 11 and you don't get the grades, you're locked, then out for the 13. Um, so you really do need to put that put that yeah. time to have a think about where your child's flight path really is. Yeah. I also heard like I had some of the members in our WhatsApp group, the kids also passed 13 plus, but didn't get space in. They are still in the waiting list. Yeah. And they can only get in when someone from that school leaves. And yeah. that's really rare that somebody would leave. But... It could be like someone's have parents posting or something like that happen. Yeah. Then they will contact like them and they'll tell them, yes, the space is there for you. Yeah. And with, with the Indies, I would say you need to be prepared to pay full fees in case you don't get scholarship. There's no point going through the whole process, figuring out that you're not going to get scholarship and then deciding that wasn't for us. So are you prepared, if worst case scenario, to pay, I don't know, two and a half, three grand a month? For that many years, remember, it's it's that commitment. So think about that side as well. Yeah. It's not only you that. Also, you also have the tuition fee. You also have the trips fee. Yeah. And the uniform. Oh, my God. It's too, too expensive. With a lot of the indies as well, the, the scholarships are low percentages. They're not high percentages. Um, yeah. People think that they are, but, but they're not. They're there because they are celebrations of, of people's academic yeah. Um, academic, it's not there as a lowering of fees, really. You're looking yeah. more at a bursary than you are at a scholarship at that point. Yeah. So you do need to consider the financial. It's not going to be 100%, not even 20%. So academics alone, I don't think I've known anyone to get more than 25 maximum percent. Of. I think so. The parents who get benefits or something like that, they could apply and they could get something. Bursaries, that's a bursary. bursary. Yeah. Not yeah. Sure. yeah, but even that, with the current climate, with a lot of people uh, becoming unemployed, um, it's going to be hard to get even a bursary. I think so. You have answered this. How to apply for turning plus? We did that. Go on their websites. <laughs> yeah. How to improve <laughs> on degrees with a within proper shapes. Um. I don't really understand the question. And, uh, and our degrees. Are we talking interior angles or maybe, maybe. So, well, could could Prince? Could you could you explain that to us? Oh, yeah. yeah, I think so. It must be the ninety degrees angle or one eighty degrees, or something okay. with NVR angles. Yeah, if if if, he, if Prince could explain that to us a bit more, maybe we can be more specific because that doesn't really help us. <laughs> is writing poetry is also included in creative writing for 11 plus? Not that I know of. No, I've never come across a poetry for creative no. writing. The reason being, marking it would be a nightmare. But I think so. Poetry do come in um, St. Olives. The second stage, it's been two, three years. They have included them. But not to write. Not no. to write, just no. for comprehension. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's look at that lots, but... Yeah, yeah. but writing poetry, it's very hard to mark. Um, you couldn't have the marking scheme for that. Okay, he's yeah. done it. Prince has done it for you. <laughs> what do you mean by... Do you mean irregular and regular polygons? How to organize the degrees in maths if you come across improper shapes? Okay, well... Let me see if I, if I, I don't know if this is a question, so it's just a stab in the dark. So um, 
you have to learn that triangles 180, quadrilaterals are 360, okay? Then there is a rule that the exterior angles of any polygon, so a polygon is a shape with straight sides, any shape with straight sides. So the exterior angles, the angles on the outside, will add up to 360, regardless of whether it's regular or irregular. So you mean by improper and proper, I think he means regular and irregular. Okay. Yeah, said, yes. um, so if it's got if it's a regular pentagon, it's got five exterior angles, you divide 360 by five. So that's your exterior angles. And then to find the interior, you just subtract that from 180. That's the that's the explanation behind it. But there is a formula as well. I, know. Is, I think so go for the basic ones. Don't go for the GCSE levels one. They are only 11 plus. They are giving 11 plus, not GCSE. Yeah, if they are going to sit the super selectives, these questions are yeah. asked. Yeah. Exactly. But they will yeah. just ask you about like how to find an angle or things like that. They won't ask you to go in the extreme way like they ask in GCSEs. No, they do. They do. They For do. Williams, um, Henrietta Barnett, they even sometimes ask to draw them out. Yeah. Yeah. Draw I didn't do that. With my kids, so I'm happy no one is giving that. So I'm yeah. good for that. Go and look at key stage three. So BBC bite size is very good. So if you Google BBC bite size interior and exterior angles, there's lots of free stuff on there. Also, it's also worth saying that um because Oak Academy and BBC Bite Size are running their live lessons. Oh yeah. That you yeah. can you can go and enter ones that aren't your year. They're not yeah. like locked. So yeah. go and have a look at the math and yeah. go through the lessons that they're doing for for the years above because it's going to help to under, help for you to understand the the idea of how to do it. That's a formula for you now. Is n minus two formula for number of triangles in a polygram is true in for all cases? Yes, you take the number of sides, you minus two, which means that you then have the number of triangles that you could draw in the polygon. So if you've got a pentagon, you minus two, that gives you three because you could draw three triangles and yeah. then you can times by 180 because there's 180 degrees in a triangle. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true for all cases, yeah. Uh, it looks like I'm doing my GCSEs again. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at all the formulas today. That's because you do with Kent kids more, Ashima. And Kent is key stage two curriculum. It doesn't go above that. Same with Medway and Bexley. Whereas we probably do, Gemma does 13 plus and I do with the super selectives. And we have to do key stage three with them. That's the I do it. I do it like for private schools. Only the ones which don't deal with all these things. Okay. <laughs> and I find them, I was like, okay, 13 plus is easy. Yeah. But looking at this now, oh, so many formulas and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll also admit I teach GCSE maths. So <laughs> My niece is the one who does with all that. Yeah. Thanks for all these things. Uh, she's good in maths, like she's uh, done masters in maths. So she's the one who helps with all the math stuff. It's not me. Oh, so all these things are new for me, all the formulas and things like that. Yeah, it's 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 for for someone who's not inclined to maths, it's not easy. But I love maths, so I find it quite good. <laughs> I prefer Envia more. I mean, I can answer anything about Envia because I just deal with Envia and verbal with them and English, and maths it's all hers. I mean, she's the one who who does maths, explain the maths, and I can do easy maths with them. But when it comes to word problems, I'm gone. I'm like, okay, here comes Tuti. There's, such a, there's a there's a great feeling now. of of achievement once they finish because I mean, there you've got the basics of GCSE. You're never going to lose it. So yeah. you're at the basics of math GCSE. If you've done some of the super selectives, you're yeah. at a core GCSE math basically by that point. I know it's like foundation maths. I feel like 11 plus is like a foundation maths. So the super selectives, yeah, not yeah. all of them. So that's the wrong. Parents, I don't want parents to get panicked now because it's not the same for all. So you need to look at where you live. Where you live and what you're giving. Yeah. yeah. Which website you can help with 11, 13 plus? Um, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so go for private school papers. 
How yeah, it depends on if are you looking at yeah, it depends on if they're looking at private or they're looking at grammar entry. Um, yeah. Grammar's tricky because you might be just going on a on a blind path because as I said, it might not even materialise because where you live the grammars might not even have a space. Uh independence, there's lots of websites. There's um uh I would say go and look at the key stage three SATS papers. Gemma, do you use them? Uh, I use ISEB. So I the ISEB has a 13 plus syllabus yeah. um, and they've got a couple of past papers which okay. are worth looking at. Yeah. Yeah. So, similar. Yeah. yeah. So look at it those. also gets confusing because you could have a level one, a level two, and a level three for 13 plus. So yeah. it's individual school basis for, for the yeah. Indies, especially. There's yeah. another one from Prince. I think so. He's into Wobble today. <laughs> <laughs> How do you improve on finding the Third letter word missing from a word. Finding the three letter word. This is about vocabulary, I yeah. would say. Normally, it's in a sentence, isn't it? So you, you read the sentence and you understand the context of what that sentence is, is, is saying. And then you think of words that might make sense in that. So you don't look at your entire vocabulary. You look at that particular sentence. And again, it's 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 practice, definitely practice. Yeah. And say them out loud. Well, yeah. I mean, not out loud, but eleven <laughs> saying <laughs> it loud in eleven plus. Yeah. Never said us to say it loud. The inside, <laughs> inside voice. <laughs> but but say them say them aloud in your head, just not like head, aloud. Yeah. <laughs> we should say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what 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 we're saying is it needs to make sense. So one word. Just because you thought about it, it needs to fit in with that sentence. That's that's the key. Yeah. <laughs> I just do a lot of practice with them. And practice makes them perfect. I mean, if we tell them in the beginning how to do it, and starting in year four is the basic one. And it's so funny, you do the same thing with the year four when they go in year five. And if I tell them to do the same thing, they'll say, Ashima, you didn't do this with us. I'm like, what? Yeah, I think year four is more about building that routine and that aptitude to doing extra work don't make them do the same amount of work that you would expect them to do before the exam yes. because it's not a hundred meter race it's a marathon yeah. and they will just crash and burn i have seen this so many times i've been doing this so many years i have had children who are exemplary in year four and beginning of year five come June, July, they are going down. They don't want to do work. They're rebelling. They upset and tantrums. I've had a girl who, um, second stage of Wallington girls, she had a panic attack because she couldn't. It was just building up inside her. So we really need to understand kids, their mental health, pace it so that it's not a burden. I had a girl. I mean, last year. I mean, I, I, if you remember, Manju, I discussed with you also. She was she was lovely. I mean, she still is lovely. <laughs> I think what was wrong with her was she used to get anxiety. Yeah. So when she went for 11 plus, Bexley, she left a little bit of her paper. And she was like, I encouraged her, said, you can do it. But in Kent, her anxiety level became so high. Mm. She oh, left yes. half the paper. Yes. And then her mother was crying. She was crying. And the, the, her mother wrote me a message, our 11 plus journey is over. And okay. according to me, she is a new state girl. So I told her mother, I said, don't do that. Maybe your child, something happened that day, encourage her to go. Yeah. And she'll do it and touch wood. But that girl did so well in new state. She got into new state now. She's starting new state in September. Yeah. We, we use these little things, which are like mindfulness cards. Oh yes. So they're really they're they're kid friendly, um, and and we just we just say work through them because it's important that you look after the whole of you. You don't just look after the brain because sometimes we get like over over stimulated. So the idea is is yeah we've got a couple of like mindfulness type yeah. cards, exercises to breathe. When you've got that split in a paper, some of them just need that two minutes to sit there calm themselves yeah. down if they've got yeah. techniques on how to do it 
then it's a lot better when they go in because they know, okay, I've been doing this before. I know how to calm myself down. Yeah. And what you mustn't do is go on about it at home. So don't, don't build it up. There's an exam coming, there's an exam coming. You know, don't build it up. Um, I remember when my daughter went to do her exam, I didn't even go with her. Her dad, because her dad is like so chilled out about everything. Um, they didn't talk about the exam and she came home. I didn't ask her. You know, you have to be, you have to let them do it in the most relaxed manner. And you, by pressurizing, you're not going to help. And I don't compare them to anyone else. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't don't compare. Don't, don't compare. Yeah. Even if their cousin did this or their cousin didn't do this, don't, don't, just, they are different. <laughs> and siblings, siblings are different as well. They're all different. Um, it's not one size fits all. And you mustn't, and I think that it's, it's a bit hypocritical because you have groups where you have 5,000, 6,000 parents. They all are w wanting the same thing and we're giving the same advice. But remember, it doesn't fit all, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's important to hear you, Manju, to say that that your youngest, your youngest is completely different, and that yeah. that's fine. And you're doing yeah. what's best for him. Yeah. Because I'm not that's... going to put him through that process because I I don't have the stress levels to take it. I I will just probably break down. So I've decided now he's not going to do the grammars and he's going to do a ten plus. And we've got a couple of ten pluses near me. Um, you know, when my daughter was doing it, I couldn't afford the fees. So, you know, I'll be very honest with you. So it was either grammars or it was a comprehensive. And, and she wanted to do it because she used to do some classical Indian dance groups and all the senior girls there, they were all going to this school. So regardless of academic and everything, she just said, Mom, I want to go there. So she passed all the exams. But because she was so determined, that that was what what made that path easy for me had she been reluctant i would not have even though i am a tutor and i tutored thousands of kids into different schools over the years it's not the same and i don't see it as an accolade that my kid goes to that school or you know it's not because they're all so different so just understand that we need to take a back step sometimes and just appreciate you know that it's not the same for everyone i had a uh, experience on this like you said, you get nervous. I want to uh, tell you my experience. When my son was giving his kin, I went in the morning with him for the kin test. I took my dad with me. And you won't believe, in the line, I could see the kids were enjoying having chat with the friends. The, what the mothers were talking. Did you sleep last night? Are you feeling now? It was like, it was looking like the parents are going in and giving the 11 plus. And I was we standing with them. Out. And I was we getting so nervous. Out. I was like, where am I? Yeah. And they were like, uh, another mother was saying, oh, my God, you know, after this, we have Bexley again, two more nights, I won't sleep. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this no. is something I just want to tell everyone who's listening. Please be cool. Don't be like these mothers standing in the in the line for the kids to enter in the entrance and uh, getting nervous and making others nervous. That's interesting. I'm, I'm just planning our um, for our. 11 plus box for september and i think i might actually put something in for parents now <laughs> i was thinking of putting putting a lot down for for kids and like how to run through the night before and and things for kids i'm gonna put something in for parents too <laughs> I did that, so i did for the first time last year because i lost a dear friend so for, for raising money for charity i did a free stress management for parents and oh, it's amazing that. it's amazing that they brought their kids in and and the lady the counsellor asked, what are you most scared of? And every child put their hand up to letting their parents down. That was their worst fear. And that was an eye-opener for me and for, for some of the parents in the room. So we really need to understand that. So I think, yeah, so the couple of days before the exam, what I say to the parents is stop. If they don't know it now, they're not going to know it the night before the exam. Stop everything. Watch a film. You know, bake a cake, go for a walk, spend some time with them, reassure them that you will still love them after, regardless of the results. And that's really important. Yeah, so Gemma, add that in. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, like, little parents I'm a nervous parent. I won't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> I was one of the nervous parents. I told my son, because where we live, we don't have any good schools, except yeah, uh, grammar schools. 
So yeah. I told my son, if you don't pass 11 plus, you are going to do homeschooling. So uh, when he went, uh, he got into Skinner's. I went to pick him from uh, his primary school. I still remember. He said, "Mom, did I get a school?" I said, "Yeah, you got Skinner's." See, mom, I won't do homeschooling. Uh-huh. I was like, "Oh my God, what did I tell him?" Yeah, I mean, my mom, my mom told me that if I didn't pass the eleven plus, I'd be a lollipop lady. And I don't know where that came from. It's lodged in my brain still. Oh. Still, it's lodged in my brain. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but yeah, it was something that she told me. Yeah. And so they do the, carry it for life. Yeah, thankfully, I didn't have it. So I, 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 where, where, where I went to school in Oman, in Muscat, it was such, and I don't think I could have coped because I was quite a nervous child and I used to you know, stammer, and I was quite a geeky child, but I couldn't, I don't think I would have coped with this kind of pressure, you know, and I didn't know half the things that these kids know, to be honest. They're too clever. Yeah. Uh, There's one here. Is it true that August Bond get two extra marks in 11 plus? No. No. (laughs) (laughs) There's standardization for age, but it's not a certain number of marks. It's to do with a curve. And it's a really complicated formula. Yeah. And again, it, it's about doing as well as you can. It's not about the marks that you get because of when you're born or anything like that. It's about yeah. doing as well as you can. But and normally, in Bexley, do you get in Bexley? Seriously, in Bexley and Kent, you get five marks extra. I don't think it is. It is awarded as such. I think uh, it's like have, sunrise. They do that. Yeah. What What they usually do is they have questions that they think this child who is a young one won't understand. So if they have two questions that are worth five marks, then they will give those those children those marks, right? But because it doesn't really add much value these days. In the, in, in the olden days, yes. But now what's happening is, especially in maths, all these kids are so heavily tutored, they know everything. Um, the tough ones are the ones they get right. So they look, they, 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 they don't use that as a big uh, weapon. You can't use that as a big weapon anymore because the tough ones would be probability or algebra or, you know, um, inverse proportion. And those are the ones that your child would have done. And the ones they may get wrong would be the simple, you know, word problem where it's three steps. So don't go by that. Gemma is absolutely right. Just make them do the best they can. And don't worry about standardization and all of that. I know this is something I keep getting. In my tuition also, they ask me, my child is July born. What do you think? Will he get some extra marks? And I'm like, okay. Well, he might get a one or two, yeah. but don't think about that. Let him do the way he is. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't. It just means that their brains are, you know, not as probably developed. But again, it's such a, a wrong statement to yeah. say. If you can't, yeah, you can't. So I'm I'm September born, and I was the year ahead, um, and like I scored, I scored pretty highly. (laughs) So it doesn't, it's not a, there's not necessarily an age standardization about it. It 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 really is nowadays, especially it's really close. It is very close. It's half a mark, one mark, and it's probably in areas that you wouldn't. Can think you know I've I've represented some children in appeals where they've you know they haven't been able to articulate their opinions that well and and it's been it's like units you know they've forgotten the unit and it's as close as that. What about age problems and algebra? Yes, they do come up. Uh, second stage of super selectives, uh, so Tiffins. Um, Henrietta, Wilson's, Wellington Girls, Nonsuch, um, Center Loves, you can expect them. I guess uh, Bexley can also have them, but it's Q- like multiple choice, easy ones. Yeah, but again, QE has them, but QE is multiple choice, but it's not easy. QE is, is yeah. quite tough. Yeah, QE is the ones I've come across. Yeah. They do. Um, the way I teach them is Singapore method. I don't know if you do that, Gemma, but I use the, the visual visualized method where we do columns so if it's a uh, I don't know Alan 
and and Bob and Jack. So if Alan is five years older, and I would have one for what their age is now, what one one for before and one for future. So I do columns and rows, and and that is a good way of learning them. So add five for five years ahead, or subtract three for three years behind. But everybody I has it. Yeah. yeah, I draw mine out. So I've got boxes for them and then they'll jump ahead or they'll jump behind. But it's a similar yeah. idea. It's about what fits your child. I basically yeah. I use algebra and age problems. I try using that with them. Because... You don't have to because it's it's a misconception that you need algebra for everything. Um, you don't need to. There are other ways of doing it as well. And some children understand it better without algebra. Um, and it's perhaps what fits them better, what they understand better. They understand better. Yeah. And some kids like doing this in their head. That's so cool. Yeah. Guys, do you have any other, it's going to be 9.30 now. I'm just thinking if they have any other, uh, then we can stop this live. Let's take I know, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you improve with practice? We have done that. There's any other, please give us one last one, then we'll be closing this one. Prince, I have answered lots of yours. It looks like only Prince is the one who's going on asking today. <laughs> Anuja, <is> <laughs> someone is really active. Prince, I think it's your bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> or must be the parent, yeah? Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what is Manju saying? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Although it's almost my bedtime, so. <laughs> it's 9 I'm an owl. I stay up to quite late, so I'm fine. Then early you're a morning. baby. That's early you sleep early. Yeah, well, I, I teach other time zones, so I got to be up at six, I think, tomorrow. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Thank God. I didn't take, I had some. One calling from Dubai, can you give tuitions to us? I said, no, please. I, I love my sleep. I can't do it. <laughs> we have, we have I teach sometimes California. Yeah. <laughs> we have children from, from other parts. Um, but I, I generally tend to choose a time that is in the middle ground. Um, so I'm not waking up too early and, and these, they're not staying up too late as well. But not that many, but yeah, we do. I think so this lockdown has made me more uh, unactive. I feel like I used to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. My son used to catch a train at 7.15. Now thinking at 6 o'clock in the morning looks like, oh, it's too early now. Oh, my gosh. We start his lessons in the school at 8 o'clock. And that also feels for me, it's like, oh, so early. Again, I have to wake up at 8, before 8. You got another question there, Shima? Yeah. When we teach our channel by ourselves, we start panicking. My son is in year four and we have been preparing though. That's good. You're doing that. And she's saying, we are doing basics in each subject. I think so. That's fine. Year yeah, four. Year four. Year four is all for that foundation stuff. You've got to have steady foundations. But there are a lot of, a lot of people who do panic teaching their own kids. I yeah. know that that's something that a lot of people... I get a lot of parents who are tutors or teachers but they send their kids to us yeah. because they're like i'm just gonna that. step away <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I had I one your one called me up that was so funny and she said i want my child to be tutored and when i said no to her i said no ashima in september she'll be in year two i said no i don't take year two or year threes and she said, there's another, are you full? That's the reason you're saying no to me. I said, that's not the reason. I want your child to have a good childhood. She's young, too young. Yeah, and um, you know. what I would say to you is take that word out of your vocabulary for 11 plus, panic. If you're panicking now, you send signals to your child because they, they, they pick off your body language. You don't have to say it. And then it becomes like some some monster that's going to get them. Um, you're, 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 you know, putting that fear into them. So treat it something that is fun that's going to happen. Don't treat it as something dreaded, basically. Okay, I think so we should end now. We had enough. I'll say bye to these girls first. Then I'll say bye to you guys. Because we have answered a lot now. And I think yeah. we are hungry and one is sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> 
otherwise they'll say uh, she was goddess life she made us hungry she made us sleepy no <laughs> oh, uh, i need to go cook now i think i don't know if i've got dinner but I'll check <laughs> thanks for coming here thank no you. no thank you thanks for having us thank, thank you for Yeah and and any any questions guys you can always ask me I I'm, I'm not normally very active I'm trying to be a bit more but yeah you can ask any questions even I if you keep don't. asking anything in these messages both of them will be looking in them no, Yeah drop <laughs> drop stuff down drop stuff on Facebook I'm I'm fairly often there um, Yeah she's up on the times we are sleeping so she'll be able yeah. to answer Yeah I'm quite often there <laughs> All right lovely thank you so much All lovely right, then. So let's take okay, Manju out first bye Manju first now is Jenna bye Jenna bye bye thanks for coming thank you and that's for me now i thank every one of you thanks for coming in the live i'm just writing welcome thank you to all of you thank you all of you for coming live with us today and i hope you have a lovely uh can't wait for tomorrow yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow and i have a lovely day all of you the rest of the day and i'll see the kids in the morning again tomorrow and please stay tuned for just uh come tomorrow at 12 we'll be celebrating our 12 weeks and get as many friends you have for tomorrow we'll be doing lot of things tomorrow I'll be giving some certificates tomorrow to the kids and I'll be giving some prizes out for all the active kids. I'll be really good. It's been 12 weeks we are doing the live sessions and tomorrow we are just going to celebrate. Have a lovely night all of you and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the morning at 12. Bye everyone. Thanks for coming live today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.